Hello and welcome to our new series, Tarantulas 101. In this series, we're going to be going over everything you need as you start the hobby, things you need to know, things you're going to notice and kind of wonder what's the deal with. We're going to start off with the uh, good old common everyday forum post and Reddit post. How old is my new rose here? We see this question at least once or twice a week on the forums. Um, it's, it's extremely common. And let me start off by saying congratulations. You've joined an addictive hobby. You're going to have tons of growth, tons of learning experiences, new and exciting sensations. Uh, and you're also going to have uh, you know, some lows in there. You may lose a couple of tarantulas um, for reasons beyond your control or reasons that might be your fault. But for every low, there are plenty of highs, and you're going to have a ton of fun. So let's start by attempting to answer your question. Um, the short answer, unless you bought it from a breeder who's had it an insane amount of time, nobody really knows. Nobody can tell you your tarantula is three, day, or three years, six months, and 17 days old. Nobody's going to be able to do that. Odds are, if you bought an adult rose hair, um, you probably bought it from a mega chain, something like Petco, PetSmart, um, or even from a local pet store. You, you probably bought what we would call as a wild-caught specimen. Uh, to really uh, uh, attempt to ascertain an age, and, and let's, let's put some effort into this, uh, we're going to need to determine the origin of your new rose hair. Uh, if it's adult, and like I say, a breeder hasn't had it for an insane amount of time, it's probably wild caught. Huh. Most of us that have been in the hobby for a long time prefer to avoid wild caught for a couple of reasons, uh, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Um, but, so you have a wild caught adult rose hair. Um, still, that doesn't tell us a whole lot. We would need to know, you know, is it male, is it female? Um, the quickest way to tell if it's a male is if it's a mature male. Unfortunately, a lot of wild-caught rose hairs that are in the pet trade are, you know, mature males or penultimate males where they really don't have a lot of lifespan left. Uh, the quickest way to identify, you know, a, a mature male in a rose hair is going to be to look for what we call a tibial spur. It's a hook upon the forearms and the front legs. It's used to... Uh, restrain the female, particularly her, her fangs, uh, when, you know, doing the horizontal monster mash. Uh, unfortunately, most males do not survive a molt after that, and really don't even reach a molt as they tend to focus solely on reproduction, uh, eventually stopping eating, and succumb to old age. Uh, if you do have a mature male, the good news is we can probably get closer to guessing at age. It's probably, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of five or so, but less than ten years. Uh, unfortunately, you probably only have a year or two left with that tarantula at most, uh, which can be kind of sad, but that doesn't mean your time is going to be any less meaningful. If you do, however, have a female, the answer becomes a lot broader. It's really anywhere from five to thirty years. Uh, and when we look at the first imported wild-caught rose hair tarantulas, or Gramistola rosea, uh, it wasn't really until about the early 1990s. This happened as a result of the fall of the Chilean dictator at the time, which allowed the country to be opened up for export in to many facets, including the pet trade. Um, only into the late early to mid 90s, uh, and only recently, what I say commonly, were Gramstola rosea really captive bred. Um, you know that means that we, we really don't have a direct, solid answer on a final age for a female rose hair uh, because some of those original captive bred females from the 90s, you know, are approaching 20 years old and still alive. Uh, and some people have gotten females from the pet stores that are still alive in that same time period that were adults at the time, so one would estimate, you know, 25 years old. Uh, I've actually seen a couple of these specimens, and they don't look any different than when you would go into the pet store and see today sitting in a small cage. Um, so, with that, um, you know, we know that it's probably not a, a captive bred specimen if you have, you know, a full size adult rose hair, uh, and particularly 
if the dealer can't tell you a whole lot about it. Um, the other main concern with the captive bred species coming out of Chile from the southern hemisphere, and they're, they're really used to natural conditions, temperature changes, food becoming short part of the year, uh, shortening light cycles, different, different theories that you know, tell them the seasons are coming and they're changing and they do something called brumating where they essentially, it's like hibernation except instead of sleeping, they're, they're simply fasting and, you know, almost shut down like a hibernation. Uh, with that hemisphere shift coming into the northern hemisphere uh, and being in a constant temperature controlled house, we have thermostats, the lights are on from, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. all the time, there's no shortening of days. There's no temperature changes, the food keeps coming. You tend to get some really bizarre behaviors out of wild caught tarantulas. And rose hairs already being kind of quirky really seem to just exemplify these. Um, including, it's not uncommon for people who overfeed a rose hair to see it fast for months at a time, meaning it's not eating, it's not taking in food. Um, some people think that this is that brumation kind of triggering. Some people just think it's compensation for you know, over be, being overfed, I'll leave that kind of up to you. I don't have a direct personal opinion on it. I've never really had to deal with a rose hair fasting as I've not overfed any of them. Um, so the rose hair uh, is obviously very common in these pet stores in a big wild caught fashion, as we've mentioned, meaning they are going, retrieving them from the wild, shipping them all over the world for the pet trade uh, to whatever countries will have them and buy them. And this is a, a profitable industry, but it's also a pretty stressful industry on the animal. Some of us view it as pretty cruel as you're taking you know, wild-caught, sometimes potentially 30-year-old animals out of their hole, uh, putting them in a small tub with some paper towel, shipping them to America, putting them in a small block, box on display in a pet store, uh, can be you know, considered stressful. But it also has an impact on your local populations. Uh, the Brachypelma smithy, the Mexican red meat is, you know, a gorgeous tarantula, absolutely gorgeous. And in the 1980s was what the Chilean rose hair is now. It was our common pet store, everyday tarantula. It was imported beyond belief from a wild caught status all over the world, not just in the U.S. Though so definitely in the U.S., if those of us that remember the 1980s, myself, pretty fuzzy guys, I was, you know, three. Um, but you see all these, just even stock photos of everyone had, you know, boa constrictors and pythons and tarantulas and just exotic pets and things were wild and crazy. And tarantulas were extremely popular. And what better than a somewhat, you know, subdued, mellow, bright, colorful, pretty tarantula? Um, it wasn't until, you know, the mid-1980s as the sizes of the imports heading into China, of all places, were really shrinking that, uh people began to feel that the species was approaching a threatened status or an endangered status. And that's when the smithy became CITES listed, which means it's not available for wild caught import into a lot of countries, almost all countries, anyone that's you know not doing anything shady, uh, including the U.S., which is why most of the time when you see a smithy for sale, it's either really tiny, you know, about the size of a dime, maybe a quarter, or its price increases with its size. You don't see $20 full-size smithies for sale in a pet store anymore. You see, you know, a full-size female smithy, I think the last one I saw was listed at uh, $450, which is, is strikingly different, but it takes pretty much just as much time to get one of those to full size as it does a rose hair. Uh, the end result of the 1980s and the bee smithy being imported into all countries for the pet trade and ultimately becoming a threatened species or a listed species, however you're you know, it's really supposed to be phrased. Uh, a lot of people fear the rose hair is next. Uh, is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't live in Chile. I don't see if they're everywhere. Uh, it certainly doesn't help that, you know, the locals don't have exactly a taste for them either. You know, with things like pouring gas down the holes, lighting it on fire, and killing them on sight. Um, but, that being said, it, it's common. It's probably not going to stop. And there's a good potential that you know, you or someone you know has a wild-caught rose hair, and there's absolutely nothing, you know, wrong with that, and nor should anyone feel bad about it. Uh, I myself have owned what was probably a wild-caught rose hair at some point in time. You know, I got her from a breeder, but what a lot of people don't realize is the 
a lot of captive bred listed slings are just egg sacs that were produced in shipping or shortly after shipping from wild caught specimens. Um, let's say, let's say for instance, however, that you have a captive bred rose hair. It's possible. Uh, unfortunately, most G rosea listed as captive bred are, as I mentioned before, from egg sacs, from big wild caught females um, that you know were laid in shipping or shortly thereafter. Um, most uh, importers choose to set aside a couple really big, colorful females in hopes that they will get egg sacs out of them and be able to sell those as captive bread. They were technically born in captivity, they can be sold as captive bread. And fortunately, there is no hemisphere kind of shift pattern. They seem to be, for the most part, accustomed as a captive bread species would to this hemisphere, which is, is pretty convenient. Uh, usually, when you see uh, rose hair slings available in the late fall to early winter, that's where these are coming from. Uh, and, and there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that either, as you're not going to be able to stop that practice from happening. It's still going to happen. Uh, it's, it's pretty much beyond your control. And ultimately, governing bodies of countries and international bodies like CITES have to step in and, and stop this kind of behavior, and it doesn't usually happen until a species is pretty well on the threatened end of things. We are still looking for CITES to step in on quite a few species of tarantula that a lot of people feel are in the threatened stage already, if not kind of past that. Uh, something to note about captive bred rose hairs and slings in general, slings being short for spiderlings, is that they are extremely slow growing. They are some of the slowest growing tarantulas on the planet. Um, I have here a close cousin of the rose hair. I have a Gramostola pulper piece. Uh, and the rose hair is Gramostola rosea, or rosa, depending on, you know, I've heard it pronounced a bunch of ways. There's an E in there, I go with rosea. Take your pick. I don't think anyone's going to fault you on Latin. Um, this is a three-year-old uh, G poker piece and is not very big. Uh, I will attempt to fetch him out. He's particularly a pretty mellow tarantula. Come on here. He's always been pretty mellow in the past, although I seem to be somewhat pissing him off. Right now. But he's out of his hide, and we're going to attempt to show him to you. This is a three-year-old Grandma Stola Polka piece. Captive bred, raised by me the entire time. Uh, if you want to see an actual size for comparison, here is just an average kitchen fork. So you can see he's not much bigger than just an average fork. Not even the big fork, just the little one. Keep in mind, it's thought and commonly believed that rose hairs grow even slower than this species does. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's all really good, but, you know, I kind of want a tarantula for show, or my tarantula's already pretty big and for show, and, you know, how do I get it there quicker? How did they get it there so big? Um, and, and to be real honest, the, when you hear terms like power feeding and accelerated growth and stuff like that, um, the particularly with rose hairs, they can be fairly controversial topics, uh, but they're usually controversial with all species. Uh, most of the rose hair sling pictures I see online are just grossly obese, extremely overfed, with huge swollen abdomens, and I've seen evidence of abdomens bursting, uh, which you know results in a dead tarantula, potentially sad kids, definitely a sad owner, um, and you know, it's not a really good situation, uh, particularly you know, with slings, they're a little more susceptible to it. Adults will tend to do that fasting thing, but slings are kind of pre-programmed just to take in food, take in food, and take in food whenever they can get it. Um, and so, so how do you combat the wild-caught tarantula craze and potential issues, or how do you just even purchase tarantulas with maybe a broader selection, more information about what you're getting? Well, you buy from a trusted breeder, and there are many of them, and actually due to different regulations, import rules per country, CITES listing, stuff like that, 
you are going to have to do a little bit of research for your own country. Um, here in America, uh, we have we have a couple of trusted breeder, breeders. Uh, you know, I myself have dealt with uh, Paul from Pet Center USA, Jamie from Jamie's Tarantulas, uh, Ken the Bug Guy. Uh, but there are, there are tons of them, uh, and you know, do your research. You can certainly jump onto forums and stuff like that to, to read breeder reviews. Certainly with this tight-knit community, you're not going to see you know, guys getting away with shady behavior very long. Um, certainly, this is going to lead to mega chain stores being a big no-no. Uh, most employees at mega chain stores have never held a tarantula, definitely never owned one, and uh, you know, a lot of them are pretty afraid of them and fed misinformation by whatever the chain tells you to do, including with rose hairs, you know, I've seen everything from a misted every day to fed, you know, a ton of crickets a day, to I've seen molted tarantulas just being thrown away because they're on their back and they're molting, uh, you know, and they assume they're dead. So when talking to someone at a mega chain store about tarantulas, certainly if they've never owned a tarantula for any amount of time, you know, just don't even really take their advice. There's going to be tons more advice available to you. It's not your only. Uh, it's not your only source of advice. If you're on the internet and you're watching this video, you have access to just tons and tons more advice from far more experienced people. Uh, with that, like I say, check your breeder reviews. Uh, go on somewhere like Arachno Boards, uh, the American Tarantula Society, all the other. There's, there tends to be, from what I've noticed, a tarantula society for most countries. Uh, so, so check your tarantula society, see what they say about their breeders, see what they say about their research. Another option you have, and a great option, is to get a book. Uh, a lot of popular books, uh, you know, tend to come and go, but the ones that really seem to stick around are The Tarantula Keeper's Guide and Tarantulas and Other Arachnids. Both are very high rated by the American Tarantula Society, and both are just full of insane amounts of detail. Um, seek advice from your local forums, as I said, like arachno boards or arachno files or, you know, any specific to your country. Maybe see if you can't find someone a little more experienced to shed some advice. And with that, you can see these users' post histories. You can see if they're just trolling, if they're totally full of shit, or if they legitimately want to help you and offer good advice. Uh, like I say, don't take advice from anyone who you don't trust, and don't take advice from just one source. There's going to be multiple sources out there. See what's common between them. See what really makes sense, and ultimately you're going to have to learn from your own experience. So, I hope we've shed a little bit of light on how old your rose hair might be, and even if we really haven't gotten you any closer than maybe a 20 year gap, that's just fine. Uh, just in case, and if you do have a female rose hair, you might want to put it in your will as you might have it a while.